In our modern world, we put celebrities on pedestals and we take great pleasure in ripping them down. Is Meghan to blame? Is it Harry? Have they been unfair to the Queen? It looks spoiled. It looks hypocritical. The goldfish bowl of royal life is not for everybody, and it clearly wasn't for Meghan Markle. She felt stifled in the royal family, and she was determined that she was going to do it her way, and my goodness, she has done. Harry and Meghan will make an insane amount of money. Together, they are the most potent royal couple in the world. People welcomed her in. She was a star. It was the Markle sparkle. And all the stuff with her family, her father. I'm really disappointed I haven't seen my grandson. They want to say it's the media's fault. They want to say that it's Harry's fractured relationship with his brother. Then it became the diva duchess. Why is she a diva? Why? Was she pulling Harry out? Did she force his hand? Pick your villains, pick your heroes. They're all there. Do you think they walked away or were they pushed away? Maybe they just looked around at the rest of the royal family and just thought, that's not what we want. This hasn't led to a happy ending. This is the time Tonight, an ABC News special, Royal Divide, Harry, Meghan, and The Crown, with Deborah Roberts. The royal family continue to deliver new storylines, storylines that we've not experienced before. Once Meghan and I were married, we were excited, we were hopeful, and we were here to serve. For those reasons, it brings me great sadness that it has come to this. This is a great, great story. The decision that I have made for my wife and I to step back is not one I made lightly. There was so many months of talks after so many years of challenges. Hang on, Harry. We, you, where are you going? We, you're great. We can't, they're all family without you. No, don't do it. Harry has abdicated from his royal role. It was everywhere and it went around the world in an instant. I mean, this is like something straight out of the crown. He really puts you so, sister. A family fighting, two brothers butting heads. Maybe the in-law women don't get along with each other. Their grandmother's getting frustrated. Dad doesn't know what to do. Hello? That goes on in every house. That's what makes this so good. We have chosen to make a transition this year in starting to carve out a progressive new role within this institution. The palace were in utter panic mode. You take Prince Harry out of the royal family, you're taking the jewel out of the crown of the royal family. This was a complete shocker. What is the mood there in London right now? I thought, Oh my God, they've quit. We now plan to balance our time between the United Kingdom and North America. And I know I haven't always gone it right, but as far as this goes, there really was no other option. It was kind of dropping a nuclear bomb in the middle of the Queen's lap. And then all of a sudden it was like, whoa, whoa nobody in the royal family knows. This is like dysfunctional beyond belief. Some of the people that were there cheering them on on the day of the wedding feel like this was a step too far. They put it out on Instagram, having just returned from a six-week break in Canada. A couple that we knew weren't happy. Realising, having a glimpse of what life could be like outside of the bubble in London, and saying, you know what? We're going to do this. This is what we want to do. They've come across as rather precious, spoilt millennials, throwing the toys out of the pram because it's not exactly what she wanted or they wanted as a couple. Harry and Meghan, in the eyes of the public, said, oh, actually, we just want the good parts and we don't want to do all of this sort of boring pomp and pageantry. The public doesn't want them on yachts in the south of France with Elton John, because that's not what it means to be royal here. She probably has the sort of fairy tale view that we have, only to find when once she becomes involved with Harry, it's not a fairy tale. They started to get a lot of criticism about the way they were living their lives. Were they just being naive? It's not all palaces and fast cars and lots of money. It's the gilded cage. In the end, it's not about you. It's about anything you can do to support the queen, who's the head of state. For Prince Harry to make the decision to say, I'm stepping back, I don't want to be a royal, that is an enormous slap in the face for the royal family as an institution itself. So Harry was, if you like, summoned to see the boss of the family. There was then a summit at Sandringham. It was a 
two-hour meeting with Harry, the Queen, Charles and William. Harry, I heard, was extremely nervous before he went in there. He hoped that going in there he was going to see his 93-year-old grandmother who always always had a soft spot for him, but there was a strong chance that behind that door was also a very angry monarch. And there they began to hash out what this new role for Harry's going to be. Who's going to pay for what? What kind of security are you going to have? Where are you going to live? How many times are you coming home? What are your titles going to be? All that sort of stuff. Because they take money out of the sovereign grant, which is taxpayer money used to pay for the royal family. People in this country feel they have an ownership. So there's this sense that they should not be freeloading royals. And then came the sort of unprecedented statement from the Queen. Although we would have preferred them to remain full-time working members of the royal family. We respect and understand their wish to live a more independent life as a family. While remaining a valued part of my family. She repeated this word family eight times in her statement. So the tone was more grandmotherly than sovereign. We support you, Harry. We're disappointed, but we want what's best for you. That is unprecedented. It was her saying, this is my family, we're sorting it out. But essentially that Harry and Meghan had got what they wanted. Harry and Meghan got what they wanted, but at a price. Our hope was to continue serving the Queen, the Commonwealth and my military associations, but without public funding. Unfortunately, that wasn't possible. She loves Harry. When it comes to the decisions about the future of the Crown, she's ruthless. And that's the big thing, that people wanted to see like the Queen came down with the hammer. She's 93 years old. She has been known to be tough, but yet she sounded very grandmotherly. But you can be lovingly tough. And in a very short period of time, a decision had been made by the Queen. Tonight, everyone looking at the clues in the Queen's words taking away the HRH titles, removing public money, they're no longer working members of the royal family because the Queen's not allowing it. I've accepted this knowing that it doesn't change who I am or how committed I am. But I hope that helps you understand what it had come to, that I would step my family back from all I have ever known. I think despite our surprise at the way in which this news was delivered, the signs were there all along. We saw it when we were on the royal tour with them around Australia. Harry was not his usual self, he wasn't chatty, he wasn't calm and relaxed, he was kind of angry. The um, documentary that Meghan and Harry did with ITV clearly showed two people in a very fragile state. Meghan said that this wasn't what she expected. It's not enough to just survive something, right? Like, that's not the point of life. You've got to thrive, you've got to feel happy. It became clear now in retrospect this is only going to go on for so long. It's a very real thing to be going through behind the scenes. They wanted privacy for their lives. You know, the way they introduced Archie was different. He wasn't given the title of Prince Archie. He was just Baby Archie. That was a clue. They'd reached a point where they knew that they had to make change quickly, or it could have major damage on their lives or even their mental health. Royal watchers are losing their minds, apparently. The backlash against the Duke and Duchess of Sussex decision has created enormous divisions. It's been very divisive. They are human. But they they keep, keep having but, problems. They keep Harry, doing the same silly things over and over again. Silly. Is she the victim or is she the villain? Is she the woman who stole the people's prince. For me, maybe Meghan is the woman that set Harry free. Meghan has, if you like, given Harry the confidence and the courage to take the biggest gamble in his entire life. Next, Megxit and the media. The press in this country have made Meghan's life a living hell. Meghan is being blamed. It seems almost a thousand years ago, from May of 2018, when Meghan and Harry got married. It was this beautiful spring day. And their idyllic wedding was just typical of the British sort of adoration for them. It was so magical. And I'm a dude. And I was still caught up, swept deep in what happened that day. They seemed incredibly in love. And maybe more importantly, the public seemed very much in love with them. When two billion people watched them get married on television, 
People welcomed her in. She was a star. It was the Markle Sparkle. But almost immediately after the doors closed on the church, the relationship between Meghan and particularly the British press began to sour. I just think she's a slight social climber, I'm afraid. Megan spent more than a million quid just on her clothes. Meghan Markle just can't seem to hold on to employees. And they started talking about her being demanding, spending too much money, not caring about her royal duties, bossing Harry around. And over time, Harry and Meghan became very sensitive to these stories. We now live in an era where one negative story can become thousands of negative stories within minutes. So there's the expensive wedding, there's the American expensive baby shower, and there is the renovation of a place called Frogmore Cottage. The royals are not celebrities, they're public servants. They're paid for by the British taxpayer. But then they took $3 million of public money to renovate Frogmore. That was controversial. What was even worse was then when they started to be preaching about doing our bit to save the planet. It's a race against time, the one in which we are losing. There was Harry on one hand who was talking about climate change. No one can deny science. But then in the other, he was going on private jets to attend uh, Google summits in Italy. I think the idea of being carbon footprint crusaders and then turning up in your private jet that's shooting fish in a barrel for the press. Don't do that, it's dumb, right? So it's diva-ish behavior, basically, that, that the British press is accusing them of. And then when Archie was born, it was very strange that there was this kind of secrecy around the birth. People are scratching their heads going, why are you being so cloak and dagger? The Princess of Hugs mm. is now saying, <laughs> step away from me, like this is private, this is only about me. Funny that, because her wedding wasn't only about her. There was uproar in the British media about them not doing the grand moment on the steps of the Lindo wing like Kate did. She just had this baby, she's sitting in the hospital and she's like, you want me to go out there and do the dance for the press? Not happening, my brother. How much of a big deal is this? Ordinary people share the photos of their kids too. Why won't you do that, right? We covered your wedding, now show us the baby. It seemed ungrateful. Harry and Meghan changed a tradition and they released a photo with the Queen, with Prince Philip, with Meghan's mother Doria. These key moments that have happened in their lives have been shared on Instagram instead. We're in this world now where the press is being bypassed and they can't bear it, so they just need to be as sort of sensational as possible. The criticism started, oh she's opening her own car doors, you know, she doesn't understand royal protocol, she's talking too much, she's not talking enough. She was under and the most unbelievable level of scrutiny. My British friend said to me, I'm sure he's great, but you shouldn't do it because the British tabloids will destroy your life. And all the stuff with her family, her father, her sister. Meghan Markle's family is a disaster. It is that simple. There's no way to get around it. Thomas Markle sitting next to Piers Morgan on British TV. I'm a little embarrassed for them uh, and feeling very sorry for the Queen. Once again, he's exposing things about his daughter. And there's a sense, I think, that she feels that she's been hard done by, that she wasn't given a chance. I never thought that this would be easy, but I thought it would be fair. For me, and for, and for my wife, you know, there's a, there's a, of course there's a lot of stuff that hurts. I will not be bullied <laughs> into, into, into playing a game that's, that killed my mum. He thinks that the press killed his mother, that the sound of a shutter, the camera shutter, reminds him of that horrible time. You know, you, you really can't blame him for feeling that way. However, at the same time, those clicks are journalists who have been invited. And it's a very different thing to the photographers who were physically pursuing his mother throughout her life. I think he's terrified for Meghan. And there was an element right at the bottom of this, when you boil it all down, of a loving husband trying to protect his wife. I spoke to Harry a few days ago. He has suffered a lot from all of the things that have happened to him. He suffers a lot from people judging him. There is validity to the idea that the press have hounded Harry and Meghan. Diana was literally chased into a tunnel and died. I don't think they've been any worse than they were during the Diana years. Princess Diana was actually physically hounded by the paparazzi. They had cameras in her face. They were chasing her down the street. Nothing like that has happened to Harry and Meghan. When you continue and constantly see and hear negativity, it can be overwhelming. You can feel powerless and lost. You can feel different, confused, or like you don't belong. There's been a big conversation about the coverage that Meghan gets versus what Kate gets. But Kate, in her day, 
she was hounded. She was the most photographed woman in the world for quite a number of years. When she was just a girlfriend, the tabloids were relentless. But the difference is with Kate is that when she got married, suddenly she could do no wrong and the papers backed off. With Harry and Meghan, she's still painted out as the villain. She is still Duchess Difficult. And that's a narrative that the tabloids absolutely adore. We've got perfect Kate, trashy Meghan. The list of complaints against Meghan is astounding. She made avocado toast for a friend who was visiting and he put it on Instagram and then suddenly the headlines were about how she is contributing to like what climate change and yeah. unfair labor practices and she's choosing like end a, of the world. Yeah. But when Prince William bought Kate an avocado for a morning sickness, oh, oh, that's wonderful. What a wonderful, loving husband. And once again, you see the difference in the way the press treated those two women. You only need to look at some of the coverage that has called Kate a fashion icon for wearing a strapless dress, but then called Meghan vulgar just a few weeks earlier. Vulgar! Her fashion choices raise many eyebrows. It's a disgrace. And it's these sort of discrepancies that have made it quite difficult to understand what it is that the British press have had in for Meghan. So, yeah, I can understand why he's blaming the media, because the media are to blame. Do you think race played a big part here? We saw it in the British press. You know, the, these tones, these words being used as exotic or Harry's new girlfriend straight out of Compton. When people say, that's not a racial undertone, that's just racist, isn't it? Let's be honest. She was brought up nowhere near Compton. She's from Los Angeles. She went to a private school in Hollywood. All the coverage of her is not as one of us, but of this strange, exotic being. She's not the all-white, all-wholesome girl that Kate is. He sees what his wife is going through now. And this is all very, very raw with him. Now, Meghan is being blamed. Blame the black woman. She separated Harry from his family. The reason that they didn't want any press pictures of Archie after he was born, because they knew perfectly well that all the press wanted to know was what color was he. A BBC host had the guts and boldness to tweet a picture comparing Archie to a chimpanzee. If you listen to every single excuse that was given, oh, but he didn't mean it, it was a joke. It was racist. And not one member of the royal family said anything to support or defend her. I think both of them felt very alone towards the end of their time in the firm. When we come back, Meghan and the royal reality. The royal family is not kombucha at your door at four o'clock in the morning. It's stale sandwiches and white bread. That is what the royal family is. Da -da. Da -da. How do you take a self-made woman in her 30s who personified the American dream before she even met Prince Harry, put her into the situation of the royal family and expect her to be able to breathe? The flip-flop culture is part of just who I am. Hippy-dippy kind of woke avocado toast eating you know, Pilates and yoga smoothie. I love my cutoffs and flip flops and being as relaxed as can be. We kind of think that's weird, all of that, you know? She was a, a divorcee with a million followers on Instagram, an actress, didn't tick a single box of princess in waiting material. She wasn't just this clone come to marry Prince Charming. If anybody knows about marrying into an aristocracy as an American, you do. Are there rules? Is there a rule book when you start to enter this world of nobility? And America, we love the royal family and we love the aristocracy, so of course we must know how it's done. Table manners, like six forks, six knives, three spoons, four glasses, and that's what Meghan has had to go into it. But do you have that sense of responsibility, Prince Harry, for what you're asking Meghan to do? Um, that sense of responsibility was was essentially from day one. But, you know, I still had to have some pretty, you know, frank conversations with her to say, look, you know, what you're letting yourself in for is, mm. it is, it's, it's a big, it's a big deal. On the day she said, I do, she also took on a job at the same time, a job that she had absolutely no say in how she gets to do. The whole reason that the House of Windsor has survived is that it's essential that the spotlight is on the monarch and the heir apparent. And any other member of the royal family who tries to take too much oxygen away from the queen or the heir has found themselves getting into difficulties. 
I would argue that it looks like it's a very hard place for a modern woman. Being a part of this family and the platform that comes with that is an incredible responsibility that I take really seriously. I think the way Meghan tried to work in the palace didn't fit in with how other members of the royal family worked. Uh, I know aides who have one meeting a month with their principals. Harry and Meghan were popping in and out of the office almost every day for briefings and updates. I think they felt that she'd come in and, you know, kind of be a sleepy little royal. But Meghan was like, no, I need to know the people, the places, I'm going to talk to people, I need to know nationalities, I need to know languages. There have been reports that she comes to meetings with tons of questions and binders, that she does the work ahead of time. She's aggressively emailing her stuff at six in the morning. She couldn't do anything right. Now, if every American got in trouble because they sent emails too early in the morning, I'm like, isn't that what you're supposed to do? Women don't need to find a voice. They have a voice. They need to feel empowered to use it and people need to be encouraged to listen. Suddenly, Meghan's charm that was her hard work and her perseverance was being turned into a problem for the royal family. I cannot believe it's 2020 and we're still faulting women for being ambitious. To be relatively boring is to be a very good fulfiller of the royal role. Honestly, you know, you want to leave your glam and your drama to the politicians. The characters that do well in the royal family are those stoic characters who really live to serve, who put their head down. Camilla, who supported Charles amazingly. Kate, who is now an absolutely wonderful queen in waiting. She was incubated into being a princess. She's learned never say anything, always smile, always have lovely hair. You're, you're done. Now, I think we, as a country, have to think, well, is that what we really want from our royal women? We want them to be Stepford wise? You know, I mean, really? There's a motto, never complain, never explain. Uh, and the royal family don't like it when anybody rocks a boat. That was always Diana's problem. It was isolating, but it was also um, a situation where you couldn't indulge in feeling sorry for yourself. You had to either sink or swim and you had to learn that very fast. And what did you do? I swam. When the BBC Panorama interview aired, I mean, that was a seismic moment for the monarchy. You could not believe that here was one of the most prominent members of the royal family spilling the most intimate details of her life on national television. But do you really believe that it was out of jealousy that they wanted to undermine you? I think it was out of fear because here was a strong woman doing her bit. Interesting, driven, passionate people like Diana, like Meghan, they find those constraints very, very hard. You're not allowed an opinion. And in this day and age of Twitter where everyone has an opinion, it's very hard to just say, oh, you know what, I'll bite my tongue on every single little thing. And of course, it's terrifying the thought for the royal family that this may repeat itself if the Duchess of Sussex decides to give an interview, probably to the American press. I hope to God Meghan breaks her silence and does a Diana style interview. I hope she does. She deserves it. Why not? She needs to be able to clap back at all those haters. But Meghan gave us a glimpse into how she's feeling anyway when she spoke to ITV. That now famous phrase that she said to Tom Bradby where she said, thank you for asking me how I am. And also thank you for asking, because not many people have asked if I'm okay. But it's, um, it's a very real thing to be going through behind the scenes. And the answer is, would it be fair to say not really okay? What did you hear when you heard that statement? What I thought of that was she's a shell of herself. She's not that full of life, you know, optimistic American that, that we first saw um, on that sofa when they were engaged. And I think she thought, well, why should I have to do all of this in the public eye if no one's going to listen to me and none of the really good ideas I have are going to be heard? I think we feel that she had this immense privilege and she's almost sort of thrown it back in our faces because it wasn't exactly what she wanted or expected it to be. They've brought diversity into the royal family, they've brought an American into the royal family, a divorcee, they've shown that they can be modern and inclusive. And yet within two years, you know, Meghan can't hack it. There was going to be this clash between a family wanting to bend her into place and her wanting to change them. So yes, maybe Meghan hasn't succeeded in totally revolutionising the royal family, but they haven't succeeded in bending her into place. 
Next, Harry, a reluctant prince. And during that period of frustration, did you ever wish that you weren't a prince? A prince or a duke, but as Harry, the same person that many of you have watched grow up over the last 35 years, but now with a clearer perspective. Now, life is going to be very different for him. Yes, the abdication of royal rank is a huge step for a prince. And he has followed his heart, God knows. He's followed his instincts. My goodness me, it's going to be a challenge making this work. But that is Prince Harry. He doesn't want to be a royal. He's being a father. This is a guy who is trying to protect his cub and his lioness from whatever it takes. He has become a, an incredible man, the man that his mother would be proud of. I think it's really important to remember that the British public have kind of adored Harry and he is like the nation's favourite son. We felt so devastated for him when we saw him as a young boy walking behind his mother's coffin. Somebody losing their mother and then it being, you know, projected to the millions on TV screens. It gives me chills thinking about it. He said, I kept thinking, this is my mother. Why are you crying? You couldn't have loved her like I loved her. The country essentially adopted Harry and William as their own. The fascination now, especially with this generation, is we care about her sons and we want to make sure that they're happy. What we saw after Diana's death is that the bond between William and Harry surpassed any brotherly bond. I think for a long time, William and Harry maybe felt like a team outside of the royal family, children of Diana, somehow, you know, different to everybody else. But you simply cannot underestimate how close Harry and William became. Harry obviously has been born and bred with a sense of duty. At the same time, before he even met Meghan, he was talking about the possibility of not being a prince. This is my bed. It's the f I don't really make it when I'm down here, which is a joy. That's it, made. <laughs> he was in the army for many years. He did two tours in Afghanistan. I signed up because I wanted to be one of the lads. This sort of normality for, for me to be amongst these guys was, was, was so important. He talked about going into the army and how that gave him a certain amount of anonymity in some ways, that he was just hairy. And then, while he was out on operations in Afghanistan, somebody says where he is and he's brought home. I think that really hurt him. We saw Harry, for a number of years after leaving the army, almost taking the role of official royal gooseberry. Like the third wheel with Meghan and Will. It would be Harry popping up in the background at all sorts of events. Enter Meghan. Enter Meghan. She's already experienced a life that he wants a slice of. The British are very kind of reticent to do anything drastic, and he kind of needed this American to come and say, no, take what you want in life. Be the person you want to be in life. When you have the privilege of meeting him face to face, he doesn't disappoint. He's a life and soul. He's the guy, he's the member of the royal family that if you were going to have a barbecue or a dinner party, he'd be top of your list of invites. In spite of the place that he was giving and all of the benefits and, and comfort that, that life has given him, he's, he's one of the most committed and hardworking people people that I know. Centre Ballet is a charity that is very special to Harry. It was set up in memory of Princess Diana. I was named the first ambassador for the charity, helping kids with HIV. My commitment to Centre Valley comes from an inspiration from the leader of Centre Valley, which is Prince Harry. Africa is very close to my heart. Obviously, my mother had a very soft spot for Africa as well. Sadly, over the last couple of years, Harry and William's relationship has gotten worse. Sometimes to Harry, William is his brother, and other times he's the future king and his boss. And it's always hard to sort of differentiate where the line is. When seeing Harry and Meghan's whirlwind romance unfold, William put the brakes on or tried to and said to his brother, look, just take your time, don't rush into anything. I don't think Harry ever really got over that. There's been a lot of talk in the press about rifts with your brother. How much of that is true? We're brothers, we're, we'll always be brothers. Um, we're certainly on different paths at the moment, but I will always be there for him, and as I know, he'll always be there for me. There's very little that we know about William's reaction to this, and from the conversations I've had with AIDS, he said very little. I think, as a brother, he's been quite hurt at Harry's actions. Harry's decision comes from a very powerful statement he made last year in this ITV documentary when he said, 
I will not play the game that killed my mother. Every single time I see a camera, every single time I hear a click, every single time I see a flash, it takes me straight back. How can he live every day with the job that he has if that's the reaction that he's feeling? I think Harry still seems like that guy who was wounded at the age of 12 when his mother died. When I started my public life 12 years ago, I understood the media might be interested in what I did. I can only imagine what you may have heard or perhaps read over the past few weeks. But I was not aware of how overwhelming that attention would become. But the media is a powerful force. In a manner that's been hard to bear. I hope that helps you understand what it had come to. I will be reducing the extent of the public life I've led so far. That I would step my family back from all I have ever known to take a step forward into what I hope can be a more peaceful life. I could see in his eyes and in his voice that, that you know, he's on to something really spectacular. There are definite echoes of Princess Diana and the speech that she gave, but you would have thought that rather than repeating this, Harry would have looked at that and seen that it actually didn't work for his mother outside the protection of the royal family, and she was much more vulnerable and much more exposed. Tragically and paradoxically, it makes his story that much more compelling. If he had said it's all behind me, people wouldn't be paying attention. But because he says it's not behind him, he becomes that much more of an ongoing story. So his honesty is almost drawing the attention that he probably doesn't want. Going forward now, if this decision for Harry to step back does nothing else, I hope that it heals that breakdown in relationship between Harry and his brother William. Because unless they reconnect, unless they can continue to be mentors for each other, certainly when Prince William eventually becomes king, he'll be a far lesser king without Harry as his support. Meghan and Harry. Meghan has left the UK and now returned to Canada. We are taking a leap of faith, so thank you for giving me the courage to take this next step. Do you think they walked away or were they pushed away? I think they walked away. I think they had enough. This is the start of a whole new adventure for the Sussexes, for Harry and Meghan and their ability to choose to give Archie exactly what kind of life they want for him. Harry and Meghan are living on Vancouver Island, which is in British Columbia, the west coast of Canada. They have been staying there for almost a couple of months now. The couple have been staying in a beautiful waterside mansion. Well, I think Harry and Meghan have already experienced a breath of fresh air in Canada, a place where they are hugely adored. Canadians are really excited about Harry and Meghan moving to Canada. We haven't learned how to play it cool yet. Meghan lived in Toronto during the time that she was acting on Suits. I have been killing it here for the better part of a decade. We're kind here, we're polite. It's not gonna be as negative towards them. At the same time, I think Canadians would feel a little bit hurt if Canada was just being used as a halfway house. They thought they could have a halfway house, but they were told, no way, you're out. The Queen had to rule decisively, taking away the HRH titles, removing publicly funded money, making them pay back about $4 million of money that was spent renovating their house. This is not an easy ride for Meghan and Harry. But I will tell you this, here's what they will gain. Harry and Meghan will make an extremely insane amount of money. That first Meghan and Harry interview is worth millions. And also, Harry has received a lot of money from his mother, grandmother, his father, he's still one of the wealthiest people on this planet. So the money's never gonna dry up. What I hope will happen is they will use their celebrity, they will use their charm and good looks and whatever to raise money from people all over the world. I think that him and Meghan together from that platform that they are creating are going to be very important in, in the history of, of, of making the world a better place. Meghan and Harry's decision to step away from the royal family only enhanced their brand potency. They're now famous 
and culturally symbolic in a way that no other royals have ever really been. The problem that the Queen has is she has to protect the royal brand and it has immense prestige. Yeah, there have been huge conflicts of interest when royals have tried to monetize the brand. I'm so unconventional that instead of serving tea, I serve Ocean Spray Granapple Juice Drink. We've had Fergie with some rather strange commercial adventures. Was Peter Phillips? If Peter Phillips, the grandson of the Queen, is allowed to go to China and film a milk commercial, I think Harry and Meghan getting involved in philanthropic-related projects for Netflix or Apple TV is not going to be a problem. I don't think Prince Harry means he's going to become a brand ambassador for Rolex. Harry can still raise all the money he needs for Africa and the Invictus Games. Meghan can do all the things she wants to do now on a regular basis. She can be Angelina Jolie. A nice version. The last remaining question for Canadians is who's going to pay for their security? The Canadians are very particular about taxes and money and where it's going. Estimates for Harry and Meghan's security have come in at anything from $1.3 million to $8 million. Everybody's talking about will they be able to pay for their security? You're damn right they'll be able to pay for their security, and they could pay for yours too. I think that actually Harry and Meghan are going to get into more difficulties with paparazzi. There'll be less of an organized structure around them every time they go to an event. So we saw it with Harry's mother, Diana, Princess of Wales. Photographers chase Diana, not to get a picture of Diana. They chase Diana to get a picture of Diana in her current emotional mood. That's what's going to go on with Meghan. At every single moment in their lives, whether it's the first major commercial deal or their next child. Every single moment will be tracked. The idea that by somehow stepping back from the royal family, they're gonna somehow regain control of their privacy is tragically a fool's errand. That's just not going to happen. In fact, it's gonna get worse. UK photographers have traveled and camped out in Vancouver Island for weeks now. So they still will be photographed in Canada. He wants to live a normal life, as normal as his life is going to be, right? Because when you have a thousand paparazzi outside your house in Canada waiting to get one picture of your son, that's not very, very normal. Next, a monarch and her grandson. Would the British public welcome them back? I think the British public will always welcome Harry back. Da -da. At the end of the day, there are lots of reasons that people care about this story, but one of the main reasons is because they're worried about the Queen. Long live the Queen. We love the Queen. Your Majesty, you look beautiful. This is a human story. The Queen is 93 years old. Her husband, Prince Philip, is 99 this year. He's not been at all well recently. She's had to cope with that. She's had to cope with Brexit. She's had to cope with Prince Andrew and all those dramas at the end of last year. But don't forget, this is a woman with a lot of experience, and I don't think people should worry too much. She has been through a lot. Seeing three of her children go through divorce, seeing her two grandsons lose their mother, this on a scale of tragic events in the royal family is very low down. Who won in this issue? Harry and Meghan? or the Queen? I think everyone won. And the reason they all won is that you don't walk away from any negotiation with everything that you want. The Queen looks like she dropped the hammer on them. <laughs> Harry and Meghan have gotten out of a system they don't want to live in anymore. They've gotten everything they want. It's very sweet. I nice to meet you. To now have spokespeople living in another Commonwealth country, Canada, where the Queen is also the Queen, it's actually a win for the royal family. Are they still considered royals at this point? Harry was born into the royal family, and in a sense, you know, that blood tie will continue ad infinitum. But his royal rank, which is his princely appointment, has been put into suspended animation. Going forward, they don't have that kind of 
ethereal, everlasting, eternal magic that the royal family gives you. The Queen seemed to intimate that in about a year's time, we will see how this is all going. Is this kind of a trial separation, as it were? Well, I think there's a view that they will come back to look at how it's working in a year's time. I think we'll look back in six months' time and realise that not much has actually changed. They're obviously trying to do the best for their marriage, their best for Archie, for their son. <laughs> but Harry does love his family. The important thing to remember is that the Queen is a grandmother and she has so much love for her grandson and he adores her and that bond will stay. BBC News Special, Royal Divide, Harry, Meghan and the Crown with Deborah Roberts. The royal family continue to deliver new storylines, storylines that we've not experienced before. Once Meghan and I were married, we were excited, we were hopeful, and we were here to serve. For those reasons, it brings me great sadness that it has come to this. This is a great, great story. The decision that I have made for my wife and I to step back is not one I made lightly. It was so many months of talks after so many years of challenges. Hang on, Harry. We, you, where are you going? We, you're great. We can't, they're all family without you. No, don't do it. Harry has abdicated from his royal role. It was everywhere and it went around the world in an instant. I mean, this is like something straight out of the crown. He really put you so, sister. A family fighting, two brothers butting heads. Maybe the in-law women don't get along with each other. Their grandmother's getting frustrated. Dad doesn't know what to do. Hello? That goes on in every house. That's what makes this so good. We have chosen to make a transition this year in starting to carve out a progressive new role within this institution. The palace were in utter panic mode. You take Prince Harry out of the royal family, you're taking